Battle of the Brothers tonight in Millville as the Ridgeline Riverhawks play host to the Mountain Crest Mustangs. Of course, these two schools split off from each other a few years ago, but a lot of those kids have graduated. There's very few that still you know, went to school when that first happened. Maybe the seniors that are here now did. And so each of those schools forming their new or their own identity, I should say. Mountain Crest started the season rough. They couldn't score. They were giving up a lot of points. But region play came along, and they are sitting second in region behind only Skyview with a three and one region record. Ridgeline, on the other hand, started out great, 2-0, scoring a lot of points, and they've lost six in a row since then. It's been a tough row to hoe here for the Ridgeline Riverhawks, and it doesn't get any easier tonight. It's one of the top defenses in 4A is in town, along with one of the top rushers in the state in Mountain Crest Hunter Schroeder. A lot of action coming up on the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Wendy's is saying thanks for making the Junior Bacon Cheeseburger America's number one bacon cheeseburger by giving you more of what you love. Introducing Wendy's Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. Double the beef, double the bacon. And now it comes in a giant meal for $5 with nuggets, fries, and a drink. There's absolutely nothing junior about it except the price. Get Wendy's $5 Giant Junior Bacon Cheeseburger meal before it's gone. Coach, senior night here after your first year at Ridgeline. The region season starting winding down. Playoffs coming up in a couple of weeks. You, you get time to reflect a little bit on on this season. A little bit different than last season for you. You've kind of seen both ends of it now. Tell me a little bit about your first season here at Ridgeline. You know, it's been a great season and an incredible one. Um, I've greatly enjoyed being here and working alongside these players. And you know, it's been one full of adversity that we've really had to battle. And you know, it's one thing I've told these guys is we're you know five, six, seven plays away from being six and two as opposed to two and six, or even you know seven and one or eight and zero. Oh. But you know, it's just finding ways to close out those games and make those plays when we need them to get on the, the flip side of those wins and losses. And I know we're really close, and I know we can start to get that rolling as we end, head to the end of the season here. you got some key guys that are underclassmen, and so, you know, you're, you're putting together some building blocks now. You've seen some pretty good growth in them. I mean, your numbers show good, but the only number that matters is final score. Definitely. I've seen a lot of growth in, in our young guys. And, you know, anytime you have a young team, you know, you lack experience there. So they do an incredible job and have done an incredible job all year, but you know they haven't seen some of these situations or have faced some of these things that these older kids might have. And you know it's always nice to have experience and older guys there. But I'm really proud of how the young guys have played this year and performed. And I'm looking forward to how we can continue to get things rolling going into the playoffs. Mountain Crest brings in a tough defense that averages, I think, four sacks a ball game against opposing quarterbacks. You guys like to throw it around a little bit. And then on the other side of the ball for Mountain Crest, one of the top rushers in the state in Hunter Schroeder. What do you have to do to slow down both of those aspects for Mountain Crest? You know, I think the biggest thing for us offensively is win on first down, you know, execute, take care of the ball, and just understand, you know, they, they do like to get after the quarterback, and we have to be cognizant and aware of that. And, and in situations where, you know, our timer's running out in our head, we got to get rid of the ball or put ourselves in good positions to, you know, to establish a good running game, quick game, deep, intermediate pass game as well. And then on the flip side, defensively, just be assignment sound and then flow and rally to the ball. You know, they are a great football team on both sides of the ball, and the biggest thing will come down, I think, to execution and will. So, All right, Coach, good luck tonight on Senior Night. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. 
Say the word base. Say the word mess. At Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, we believe in a very thorough hearing test. Do you hear ringing noises? Does any member of your family have hearing loss? Do you have frequent or severe headaches? Any numbness in your face or fingertips? Do loud sounds hurt your ears? Were you in the military? Have you ever had your hearing tested before? No, I have not. Say the word mousetrap. Say the word baseball. Say the word airplane. Say the word cowboy. It also told us if you had a halt, I was able to make the words in the rest of the What are all the rest of the... Okay. Bring back what you've been missing. Bring back Cash Valley hearing and audiology. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Mountain Star Cache Valley Hospital, together we're greater. New Smile Dental, experience dental care. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. KSM means music. Music is all we do. Four Seasons Apartments and Townhomes is your home. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 25 years. Fine rendition of the National Anthem at Ridgeline High School in Millville on a brisk 44 degree evening as the Region 11 play comes to a close tonight with the Ridgeline River Hawks playing host to the Mountain Crest Mustangs. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Olson. I'll be with you all night and all the rest of this football season. There's just a few weeks left. In fact, next week, it's a short week, Wednesday night games with fall break over the weekend. And then the playoffs the week after that. Both teams with their captains out midfield. Coaches, and and coaches, toss Lee. the coin. Well, these two teams did not meet in 2016. That's when Ridgeline was established. Mountain Crest lost some students. They came down here and Ridgeline was born. Mountain Crest wins the toss and they will defer. So Ridgeline will get the ball first. They didn't play each other that first year. There was some worry about all of the, oh, all of the drama, let's just say it, that went into the, uh, of the, of the school splitting and, and people knew that it was coming and it wasn't some big terrible thing, but you know, you get sports and different things involved and, and there was just stuff going around about how that worked and, and so the, Administrations decided, you know, let's not play this next year and in 2016 and pick it up again in 17. And that's what they did. And from then, the good-natured rivalry Rednecks versus Rich Kids was born. 
the kids have had a lot of fun with that. I think uh, a lot of adults were a little concerned about that, but talking to kids that have been around that, they've pretty much done it in fun for the most part. The kids are pretty, uh, pretty good natured about it. So Mountain Crest won that first meeting, these two teams, 38 to 20. It was right here in Millville. The next year, they were out at Mountain Crest in a barn burner that Ridgeline won 29 to 28. So Mountain Crest will go on defense first. Ridgeline and their offense getting a crack at it early. Ridgeline's offense averaging about 19 points per game during the season, but they've had trouble scoring in region play. And it's not going to be easy against a Mountain Crest defense tonight that's one of the tops in 4A. This one's fielded at about the 10-yard line and then returned by Strat Simmons up to about the 16, and that's where Ridgeline will take over. Led by Caden Cox, the sophomore, 141, 227, 1,525 yards, six touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 62%. 28 times a game they put the ball in the air. He's third in 4A in passing yards, but he's going against a Mountain Crest defense that's got 42 sacks in eight games. Five sacks per game. They're going to give it to Bott. And he tries the right end, and there's nothing there. They lost Noel White in a game that we did early in the season against Highland to a broken collarbone. Jovessa DeMooney is in the game right now. He's back from a shoulder injury, the same type of injury Mason Falslip had for Skyview. And he's one of the top touchdown makers in the state as he tries to get to the edge. Steps out of one tackle and then runs over a tackler before he's taken down out of the 30, 22 yard line. Six yard gain for DeMooney. 656 yards on the season, just shy of five yards per carry. Nine touchdowns, which is good for fourth in 4A. So third down and about four. Simmons to the near side and two wide receivers to the far side. DeMooney in the backfield with the sophomore Cox. Mountain Crest looks like they're going to bring linebackers. And then they back out of it. Cox across the middle has Simmons. Simmons has a first down on the crossing pattern. From the 21 all the way out to the 34, 13 yards and a first down. running underneath those linebackers as they showed blitz and then backed out of it and dropped. Simmons cut underneath, caught it on the move. Cox put it right where it needed to be and Ridgeline with a new set of downs out to the 34. Cox fakes the give, now throws the little slant to Murdoch and it's a gain of six. The pass complete to Carter Murdoch. Fuller, Trey Fuller on the coverage. Fuller with the tackle. Second and four with a five-man front for Mountain Crest. DeMooney inside. Puts his head down. Gains three. It'll be third and a yard. You always wonder about shoulder injuries, with a, especially with a running back, where they're getting hit so many times, and the kind of injury they had, they're, they're painful. And sometimes it just takes rest for them to heal up, and then how tough are you? Third and one from the pistol. They give to DeMooney. He's got a seam. And DeMooney up to the 49-yard line. Six yards and a first down. A good start. Being strung together here by the Reaper Hawks. Cox 
Hawks rolls near side, looks underneath and can't find pick number 29, Cameron Daly. Folger on the coverage. Reach line two and six, 0 oh and four in reach and play. They won their first two games. One of them against Pineview has gone on to be one of the best teams in 4A. In fact, Croton, their quarterback that we saw, one of the top rated quarterbacks in the entire country. And Richline able to score 58 points in that ball game and a win. They won the next week, but since then, they haven't been able to get the job done. Cox turns and says something to DeMooney. Hands him the ball and he is met in the backfield by Elijah Jackson. Jackson, the top tackler for Mountain Crest, 75 tackles on the season, nine per game. DeMooney loses a yard and it's third and long. Now they're behind schedule. Our ridge line in a third and long, they've been able to gain decent yardage on first down, have a second and manageable and then third and short. Ball near midfield, no score, 8-10 to play in the first quarter. The first possession, the opening possession of this game. Four-man rush, Cox in trouble, steps out of it. Spun down after a gain of two. Jackson pulls him down, it's not a sack, but it prevents the first down and the drive sputters at midfield and Ridgeline will have to kick it away. Brandon Arnell stands back at the 15 yard line. Waiting for the Murdoch kick on fourth and nine. Good snap, low kick. It hit the Mountain Crest player, it's a live ball. The Mountain Crest blocker on the end had no idea the ball was coming behind him and it ran right up his shins. The shins of Noah Fletcher. But no Riverhawks were right around it. That could have been disaster for the Mustangs. But Arnell alertly comes up and falls on it. And the Mustangs and their high powered running game take over at the 26 yard line. Hunter Schroeder, number one in 4A in rushing, number two in the entire state. 1,127 yards on 187 carries, six yards per carry, six touchdowns. He totes the rock 23 times per game. And they're gonna throw it on first down. Taylor Bitten had a step, but Taden Burbank put it out just a little too far in front of him and it'll be second and 10. That's a good idea there, you know, you. Everybody's just expecting Mountain Crest to run because that's their M.O., pound the ball, try to catch defenders turkey neck and looking into that backfield and maybe go deep. And Burbank couldn't quite get it there. It's nice to see him playing. A couple weeks ago, he took a nasty hit against Skyview and was taken out on an ambulance. Here's the end around to Hutchinson, and he picks up five. That's the thing about this. Mountain Crest offense and their running offense. It looks like there's nothing there and you look up and they've gained five yards. We talked about Schroeder, 140 yards, 140 and a half yards per game, his average. He has yet to touch the football. He's in the backfield with Burbank. He's the kind of player you can give the ball to him on third and five. And he'll usually get you the first down. Five man front for Ridgeline. Burbank back to throw, uncorks and it's behind Arnell. It's settled down right at the sticks. The Burbank put it behind him. And it's fourth down. So Mountain Crest run their passes two out of three times. They've only had three games this season where they've exceeded 100 yards passing. They average 99 yards per game through the air, fourth and five. 
Burbank's the punter, he kicks it away. Murdoch lets it go, and it dies about four yards in front of him at the 34 yard line. That's where Ridgeline takes over. Defensively, Ridgeline has had their struggles, giving up 30 points per game this season. Coach Van Leeuwen talked to us about how many of these games were close. They're two and six. They really very easily could be four and four very easily. And a couple more breaks, and yeah, they could be six and two. But they're a young team that's learning. They've got some key seniors, but a lot of kids coming back, including the quarterback right here, Cox. Slips through a little opening and picks up six yards. He stood back and couldn't find a receiver, so he tucked and run. You've got to do that against this Mountain Crest defense. There's two players tied for third in sacks in 4A. Veter and Jackson have eight each. You're going to give it to DeMooney. DeMooney looking for the edge. Pops it outside. Lots of speed on little number three. And he's right at the sticks. And the officials say first down. I'd like to thank our Riverhawk sponsors, Cash Carlock. He's got the speed to get the edge. Giant carpet one and icon. And it's tough to do that against these Mountain Crest linebackers, Veter and Schroeder and Jackson. He can't talk enough about them. Three of the top six sackers in in 4A play for Mountain Crest. Cox off his back foot. He could feel the pressure, and he kind of faded as he threw that and didn't fall. Didn't, couldn't get his step into it. And it falls incomplete. It's second and ten. DeMooney in the slot to the near side. Simmons with him. Looks like Murdoch to the far side. And bought in the backfield. Mountain Crest. Five men up. And the linebackers read. And Jackson comes up and makes the tackle. It's going to be third and 11. Elijah Jackson for the Mustangs. Bot loses a yard. And Daly comes off the field. He's the target so many times. On long situations for Cox. And he's on the sideline, as is Murdoch. Webb is in there. A two by two look for the Riverhawks on third down. And 11. Cox steps up, uncorks, and Webb can't get there. He had gotten a step on Baldwin, but I don't think he knew where the ball was until it was too late. So Ridge Line will have to punt again. Arnell at the 21, Murdoch standing at his 30. The snap, the long snap, has been an adventure sometimes. But this time it's a good one. And Murdoch punches this one down, rolls inside the 10, and it's going to die at the 8-yard line. And that's where Mountain Crest will take over with no score. 351 to play in the first quarter. Beautiful night in Cache Valley as the sun Murdoch's behind the mountains, a beautiful sunset behind us. The last two days here in the valley, waking everybody up, letting them know old man winter is getting ready to pay a visit in the near future. 
inside give, and they're using Schroeder as the as the lead blocker. Not sure. Not sure who they gave that to. I think it was Jackson, and he picks up seven. Schroeder yet to get a carry. See how long that goes. There are 10 in the box, nine in the box as they hand on the end around to Trey Fuller, and Fuller picks up good yardage. Fuller, the ball carrier, pushed out by Will Booth. In fact, he picks up 15 yards. First and 10 at the 30. Flag as it turned up field too early, did Mountain Crest. That's Baldwin as they're running the Baldwin back at quarterback. Baldwin picks up a couple, but the receiver in motion turned up field a beat too quick. So this one should be coming back. An illegal shift. So. Mountain Crest with the first infraction of the game by either team. Five yard penalty. And Burbank back in there now. Burbank, plenty of time, slings it out to Baldwin, who picks up the penalty yardage. The pass to Baldwin. He only, only picks up three of the five. And Burbank gets the completion. And it's going to be second down and 12. Bitten to the near side, and they send Hutchinson in motion. Has to turn and catches it behind him, and he's hauled down at the 30. A gain of two, it'll be third and 10. Rhett Gebert with the tackle. You talk about the defenders for Mountain Crest, Gebert, 82 tackles. Number three in 4A. He also has nine sacks on the season. That's good for second in 4A, in all of 4A. Third and 10. Schroeder still yet to touch the ball, and he's going to be blocking now. Burbank unloads. It's incomplete. Would have been short of the first down marker by about four yards anyway. Mountain Crest will have to punt. Baldwin, the intended receiver. As Burbank's heels are going to be on his own 15-yard line. He steps forward to the 16 now. And Murdoch setting up shop at his 35. Under two minutes to play here in this first quarter. Mountain Crest was short. One lineman. Spread formation, remember the punter's the quarterback. At one hops back to him. Short kick, Murdoch tells everybody to get away. Veter and Baldwin, the first ones down there and they finally touch the ball at the 26 yard line and Ridgeline in a 0-0 ball game will send their offense back out onto the field.
Cox with DeMooney in the backfield. He's going to swing out for a pass. Cox flushed. Unloads a man behind the defense, and Cox put too much mustard on that dog. And too much mustard is never good. A little bit out of the reach of Murdoch. He had gotten behind the defense. And that's one of those plays. But when you're talking about the difference between two and six and six and two that just haven't gone Ridgeline's way this season. Cox started two for two. He's missed on his last three. Second and ten. Underneath to Simmons. Simmons on the little slant. Picks up eight yards, brings up a manageable third down and two. Simmons with two catches for 21 yards. Manages the name of the game when you've got a sophomore quarterback. We saw in that Pineview game, thought Coach Van Leeuwen did a great job of managing his young quarterback. He's thrown more interceptions and touchdowns, which you'd almost expect from a 15-year-old. Off his back foot again, he's looking for Dally, and he was fading backwards again. He's done that twice tonight. Fading off his back foot. Instead of stepping in and delivering, Dally was wide open. Fourth and two with 55 seconds left in the first. Is, Mount, is Ridgeline going to go for it? They're lined up like they are. They don't have anything to lose. They're trying to get Mountain Crest to jump, and it didn't work. The Ridgeline calls timeout. I'm sure after the timeout, they'll bring the punting unit back on the field. No scores. We're under a minute to play. Well, if you look at the RPI, every team makes the playoffs now. And they're seated according to a formula that gives each team a ranking. And that formula depends uh, in part on a team's overall record, the record of the team's opponents, and the record of the team's opponents' opponents. So the better and tougher your schedule and the better your opponents have been, the better your RPI will be. Park City's number one. Skyview number two, Green Canyon number three, Mountain Crest is at number 10. They want to stay in the top 10. The top 10 get a bye, Mountain Crest is offsides. Now one of the Ridgeline personal protectors moved, but that wasn't until after the Mountain Crest player came flying upfield. And it is offsides on the Mustangs. So the second penalty of the game, both on Mountain Crest. After Ridgeline had tried to draw the Mustangs off sides and it didn't work. They come off sides on the punt attempt. So Ridgeline with a new set of downs. We'll talk about RPI again in a little bit because this is a game, if Mountain Crest loses this game, it could really hurt their RPI. If they win it, it may not help it all that much. Veter looks like he may be coming off the edge. He's going to drop back instead. The give to Bott. He's back to the original line of scrimmage. Bott the ball carrier, stopped by Fulcher. He's a player, uh, I was told, this is his first year playing football. He hasn't played football before now. He's still kind of learning and learning to trust where his blocks are. And Experience definitely helps. Looks like Mount Crystal gonna overload the right side of the offensive line. Cox in trouble. Gets out of it for a minute. Gets out of it for another minute. 
But third minute's not the charm. He's sacked, and the Mustangs rack up a quarterback pelt again. Six-yard loss for Cox. At the end of the first quarter, we want to thank It's going to be third down and 16, and that's the end of the first quarter. No score in Millville, Ridgeline, and Mountain Crest on the game of the week. It's time for Wendy's Bacon Fest. Bacon. That's right. The place that brought you the Baconator and sells more bacon cheeseburgers than anyone is making all your Applewood smoke dreams come true. Like the all-new Bacon Jalapeno Cheeseburger. Or the Bacon Double Stack in the $5 Biggie Bag. If you're this crazy for bacon, make mine a double. We got you with the Bacon Jalapeno Cheeseburger or the Bacon Double Stack Biggie Bag. Get yours now at Wendy's Bacon Fest. So, you bought your computer from one of those big box stores, or online, and now it's really slow, or just not working right. Targets acquired. PCs Unlimited can fix it. Fixing computers is what we do, and we've been doing it for over 20 years. Service, repair, diagnostics, networking, upgrades, system and data recovery, all your computer needs. Our prices are low, and our customer service is the best. You won't get help from the big box, or online. Come see the professionals at PCs Unlimited. I love Andersons because I know nothing about gardening, but they do, and they're more than happy to coach me through it and tell me what to do, and I'm so excited. My favorite things at Anderson are the flowers and oh, the decorations. I love those, especially at Christmas time. Scoreless first quarter here at Ridgeline as we head to the second. Eric Olson along with you on the Valley Channel Game of the Week. Mountain Crest and Ridgeline. It's third and 16 for the River Hawks. And the Mountain Crest defensive front seven feast in situations like this. They just got their first sack. And you know they're chomping at the bit, looking for another one. Four-man rush. Cox protected well, looking downfield. And it's picked off by Baldwin. His receiver stopped running his pattern. Baldwin had the inside position there. And Dally, I don't think knew it was going to be thrown to him. I think he'd given up on it. Looked like he'd stopped running his pattern. Baldwin kept running it. And he picks it off. So Cox with the interception and Mountain Crest takes over. With good starting field position out at the 33 yard line. Arnell and Hutchinson to this side. Two receivers to the far side. And the top rusher in 4A who hasn't touched the football yet in the backfield behind Burbank and Ridgeline's offside. First penalty on Ridgeline. And it's first and five. Hutchinson on the move. They're going to hand it to Schroeder. Schroeder's first touch of the game. And he's got plenty. In fact, he's got 10. Dally on the stop for the River Hunt. Mountain Crest has tried some other stuff. They've thrown the ball already five times in this game. They average under eight passing attempts per game. Oh, the wrong number there. They average under eight, about eight completions per game. This one over the hands of Jackson and incomplete. 
Ball intended for the average eight Jackson. completions per game. They average 16 attempts per game. Not quite 16 attempts per game. Well, yeah, roughly, well, just under 50%. And they've already thrown the ball six times here tonight. Here's the give. A quick hitter picks up two. And the give to Schroeder. Third and eight. And these are the situations Rich Lion wants to keep Mountain Crest in third and long. Burbank out of the pocket, throws on the run, and it's incomplete. The Mountain Crest game plan's been interesting tonight. They've got the leading rusher in 4A, the number two rusher in the state. He's touched the ball twice, and they've thrown the ball Seven times they average just over 16 attempts per game. And with the RPI and not really mattering where you finish in reach and play, it makes you wonder if Mountain Crest is just working on some stuff, getting ready for the playoffs. Burbank with a high kick. Murdoch calls for the fair catch out at about the 13 yard line. So the turnover bug bites the Riverhawks, but it doesn't infect them. They don't end up giving up any points as we sit on goose eggs with 10.48 to play in the first half. No score in Millville. I figured this would probably be a low scoring game. Even though Ridgeline's given up a lot of points this season, Mountain Crest has struggled scoring points. Fake the give to DeMooney. Cox unloads, Simmons had it, drops it. I'm just kind of a deep slant. I don't know if he dropped it so much as just didn't catch it. Fletcher on the cover. It was in his hands. Here. Had to stretch forward a little bit. And it's second and ten. This time they're going to give to DeMooney. And DeMooney's going to fall forward for a couple. Give him three, six carries for 21 yards for Jovessa DeMooney. It's third down, two of six on third downs for Ridgeline. Third and seven. Cox on the move. It buys him some time. Now time runs out. He lost a yard, two yards. That's going to go as another sack for the Mountain Crest defense. Forty-two on the season now, and it's three and out for Ridgeline in the field position game, becoming a factor as Murdoch's in his own end zone to punt. We've just been slowly moving backwards, farther and farther, and it's a high snap that Murdoch gets up in the air and gets a line drive kick that takes a great Riverhawks roll. Goes to the 35 yard line. Thank you to our blue 56 yard punt. About 25 of it on a roll. Is the moon coming up over Logan Peak? Crazy thing is happening in the full moon, especially in October. Mountain Crest 
favored heavily in this one. But it's no score at Ridgeline. Double wing type of look, and here's the give to Schroeder. Schroeder picks his way through for seven. Now this is more what you expect to see out of Mountain Crest. Schroeder, the ball carrier. Richline playing at home, but wearing their road whites. I asked Coach Van Leeuwen about that, and he said, you know, the kids wanted to. Senior night, they wanted to do it. I said, okay, let's change things up. Richline in their whites tonight. Second three. Fake the give to Schroeder, and on the end around, give to Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Into Richline territory. Ten yards and a first down. Hutchinson two carries for 15 yards. Schroeder has three for 19. Jackson toted the rock once for seven and Fuller once for 15. Fifty-seven yards rushing for Mountain Crest. Here's the give to Schroeder. He's tripped up in the backfield, but he gets out of the attempt. It slowed him down enough that they were over to able to bring him down. Adam Mellon, the initial hit, one yard for Schroeder. Under eight minutes to play now in the half. Double wing set. Burbank chased out of the pocket. Hit as he throws, and it's just wide of his intended receiver, and boy, did Burbank take a wallop. Kind of left his feet as he threw it, and then the defender grabbed him and took him to the ground. And landed right on top of him. Again, he was taken off the field on a stretcher a couple of weeks ago, so it's nice to see him playing again. That was Cade Hansen that hit him just as he threw it. It's third and nine, and Mountain Crest wants a timeout. These are the first snaps in River, Riverhawk territory for Mountain Crest. They want to make the most of it. Bear River's at Skyview tonight. Green Canyon and Logan going at it. This is the region. Well, we call them region openers. Openers. Do we call them region closers? The final game of region play. And again, with the RPI, it doesn't matter where you where you end up in region. It matters what your RPI score is. We won't know playoff seeding until after the games next week. They'll reveal the playoff seedings with the final RPI numbers on the 19th. And the 19th is next Saturday. So some of these Valley teams, Green Canyon Skyview will most likely have a first round bye. Mountain Crest could. But there's still another game to play after tonight. You don't get any extra points for winning the region. But you still have bragging rights. Mountain Crest 0 for 4 on third down. It's third and nine. Give to Schroeder. And he picks up four. Make it five. It's going to be fourth down. I would imagine Mountain Crest would go for it. With the way their defense is. Fourth and four. Not a big deal. Baldwin brings the play into Burbank. Here's the give to Schroeder. Hits a wall and down he goes. Ridgeline does what very few teams have been able to do, and that's slow down Schroeder. Aiden Mellon, the last guy off the pile. Schroeder, no gain. And 
Mountain Crest turns the ball over on downs. After they'd gotten to the ridge line 40. So not, not bad starting field position now for ridge line. Cox gives to DeMooney. Looking for the right edge, good pursuit. Oh man, watching Elijah Jackson is fun. DeMooney gains a yard. Jackson came up like he was shot out of a cannon. Took the right angle and took DeMooney down after a short gain. They call the play from the sideline. DeMooney on the right side of Cox. Murdoch, the only receiver here on the boundary side. Cox steps forward, looks for Murdoch, has him. You know, in the games we've done, I've seen Murdoch make a lot of catches with his hands. With defenders right in there trying to take it away which would say to you that he's got some strong hands. Ridgeline now in Mountain Crest territory at the Mustang 49. Under six minutes to play in a fast moving first half. Cox gives it to DeMooney, they're gonna try the left side. Jackson knifes through, but DeMooney steps out of his tackle attempt and picks up four. You see what I mean, though, about Jackson? He comes flying through there. That time his angle was a little bit flat, and Mooney had that extra step. Jackson couldn't quite get there to take his take his feet out. Mooney's not big. He runs bigger than he is. But fast. See if Ridgeline takes a shot on second and six. Cox over the middle to Mooney, off his hands and incomplete. He should have caught that one. They're trying to get him in space against man coverage. He had a step, Cox put it there, and the Mooney doesn't come up with it. Third down. Third and six. And Cox was protected well that time. He may have put a little bit too much heat on that one, but it hit DeMooney in the hands. It's hard on a cold night. That ball gets slick on a cold night. Cox, pressure off the edge, steps up. Still on his feet. Down inside the 35 yard line, and he's got a first down. <laughs> 12 yards for Caden Cox, and a first down for Ridgeline. Three of eight now on third downs for the River Hawks. And we're under five minutes to play in the half. Dally in there is a, at a wing, two receivers to the near side. And they're gonna run behind Dally. DeMooney hit in the backfield, but a good surge by his line and he picks up plus yardage. Five yards for DeMooney. As he's starting to warm up now. Best drive of the night for Ridgeline. They're at the 27 of Mount Crest. DeMooney looking for the right side. Holding. This one's coming back. Veter was tackled. So instead of a gain of two, it's gonna be a 10 yard loss in second and long. It's only the second penalty on Ridgeline. Cox is four of nine passing for 36 yards and an interception. Dumuni has 31 yards rushing. It's second and 13. If 
Four wide receiver set, three to the field side. They're gonna run a screen, nothing there. And Veter takes Cox down and a flag is thrown. Cox is slow to get up. And it's gonna be a first down after a personal foul on the Mustangs. Cox is up and the official's talking to him. Make sure he knows what day it is. He took a wallop. And it's a personal foul roughing the passer on Mountain Crest. So the third penalty of the night on the Mustangs. And it's a big one. It pushes the ball down inside the 25 to the 21 yard line. And a new set of downs for Ridgeline. Cox back to throw. Late pressure coming. He's looking for the back pylon. A lot of contact. There's a flag. Noah Fletcher was right there. There was a lot of contact going on between the players, and it's P.I. on Fletcher. Fletcher on the coverage. At the 21-yard line, that's, I believe, going to be a half-the-distance type. Let's see where they spot that. 3.28 to play in a scoreless first half. But Ridgeline knocking on the door. Now it takes it down to the 11. And it's gonna be a first down for Ridgeline. And they can get a first down at the one. Give it to DeMooney. DeMooney with a big push in front of him. And he's taken down by Baldwin at the 10. DeMooney, the ball carrier. By Baldwin. Boy, he looked like he was going to have an easy path to the end zone because the entire line had flowed to the right, had things walled off, but Baldwin came up from that defensive back position got through the wall and made the tackle. The thing is they set that wall up, did the line, but there was never really a crease for DeMooney to turn it up. 2.45 to play in the half. Fake to DeMooney. Cox in trouble. Tripped up. Down inside the eight yard line to the seven. Third down. Cox the ball carrier brought down by Vader. Beater with the tackle. Cox was looking to Simmons. But Cox, I think Simmons was a little slow getting out of his break because Cox was ready to throw. Simmons was still running upfield and so Cox pulled it down and ran. Third and six. Two minutes to play in a scoreless first half. They're going to turn around and hand it to DeMooney. DeMooney down near the first down marker. He's going to be DeMooney just short. Carry. He picked up four. He needed six. He looked like he Just was going to get there. The but somebody reached out for the Mustangs and turned him back. A touchdown saving tackle on that Mount Crest defense. Fourth down and two inside the five. And Ridgeline's going to go for it. And offsides would give a first down to Ridgeline, but Ridgeline calls timeout. This exciting moment is brought to you by Cash Car Wash. Icon We're going to talk Cody. about this one. Points Giant will be at a premium in this one. Cook and Sandra Flynn and Angel. Schreiber Foods, Wasatch Taylor May Builders, Rocky Mountain Power. Land Mountain Crest will get the ball to start the second half. Real Estate, Logan Oral Surgery, and Hart Fork Oven. Ridgeline wanting to take advantage after stopping Mountain Crest on downs. 
at the Ridgeline 40. They've marched 58 yards, 57 yards down to the three yard line. The yards do not come easy against this Mountain Crest defense. The Mountain Crest defense that's giving up just 10 points per game in region play. Now the offense still out there, fourth and two. They're gonna give it to DeMooney, and he goes for the edge, and he's not gonna get there. He ran a stretch type of play instead of just trying to get a push up the middle for two yards. And he didn't gain anything. Well, he might have gained a yard. So they turn it over on downs. They come away empty after they go inside the five. One twenty-one to play in the half, and Mountain Crest takes over at their own two-yard line. Hunter Schroeder, the 4A's leading rusher, only 25 yards, but he's only carried six times. Burbank's going to turn and give to Schroeder. Here he goes. Just like that. 11 yards for Schroeder. All right, and see who it was for Ridgeline, but they may have saved a 98 yard touchdown. Mountain Chris has two timeouts left, but they're letting the clock run. They're under a minute to play. Tight formation with two fullbacks. Let's see if they give it to Schroeder again. Look at how the Ridgeline defense is lined up. It's like a front line and a back line. Ball's on the turf. Burbank fumbled the snap. Fumble recovered by Burbank. Loss of a yard. And now we're under 30 seconds, and I wonder if Mountain Crest will even snap it again. Eck is back way up for Ridgeline. Ridgeline and Mountain Crest are going to go to the locker room. Scoreless in Millville. After one half a play, Mountain Crest zero, Ridgeline zero. We'll be back with more after this timeout. Hi, Cash Valley. This is Fernando over the factory at Pizzeria. We're running a special right now. We're giving a free nachos when you buy a large pizza with three toppings. Just mention this up and you're going to get a free nachos every time you come. The factory at Pizzeria is located in 119 South Main, below the GS in the basement. Come see as soon as you can. Thank you.
Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, we believe in a very thorough hearing test. Do you hear ringing noises? Does any member of your family have hearing loss? Do you have frequent or severe headaches? Any numbness in your face or fingertips? Do loud sounds hurt your ears? Were you in the military? Have you ever had your hearing tested before? No, I have not. Say the word mouse trap. Mouse trap. Say the word baseball. Say the word airplane. Say the word cowboy. Say the word shoelace. It also told us if you had a home range over the mouth, the words were still a threshold in your ear. Uh, sports and I've always participated in sports and I've always played and I think the best part about this job is being able to watch these athletes play and it's part of my job just to sit there and, and watch these athletes succeed and play these um, wonderful sports. I always knew I wanted to work in medicine and after playing many sports in high school and getting many injuries and having to come back from those injuries I knew that I wanted to provide that same coverage and provide that same care to other student athletes because sports is a key part of growing up. So I teach one class and it's my exercise science sports medicine class and it also gives the students some college credit but mostly it gives me another setting to be with my athletes and I can really get to know them off the field and I can get to know their personalities that way when an injury does happen on the field that I can um, better, better take care of them because they know me and they recognize me. You keep people on the court and you keep them on the field and they're always playing and I always wanted to be a part of that. I always wanted to be part of the team and I always wanted to just participate and make sure that everybody who is um, healthy can stay out there playing a lot longer. So you never want to see anybody actually get hurt, but when they when they when it does happen, it's always good to be there because then we can evaluate to see if it's actually going to be a game changer for them. And most of the time it's not, most of the time it's just an injury and then we can actually get them back into play a lot quicker had they just gotten hurt and sat out. And that's what's um, most important about having us athletic trainers there is that we can really work on these injuries and get them out a lot faster had they just sat out. Um, Cash Valley Hospital is a great company to work for. Um, they provide so much support for their athletic trainers that it just makes working with these athletes such a breeze. If we ever have any questions, concerns about a certain athlete, we can just call on our support and the hospital is very, very generous to us here at the school. and. It's just a great company and they help the community and they care about these athletes as much as we do and they don't see them every day but they still care about them and that makes it such a different dynamic to work with. My job is to prevent injuries from happening but to also get the athletes back out on the field as quickly as possible after one happens and that's what Cash Valley Hospital is all about. It takes determination, strategy, training, most of all in your mind to get the idea that you can do it and then actually do it. Going into sophomore year, I was ranked second in the state and halfway through my 55, there was just excruciating, ripping pain up my hamstring. I instantly knew that my season was over. 
My orthopedic surgeon said it would take up to nine months to recover. My coach was telling me I might not run the same way again. I'm so inspired by people who say, I'm not gonna let this stop me, I'm just gonna let this help me. So I wrote a poem, never give in, never give up to the thought of impossible, because if you pull a few strings, you can still make it happen. Every chance I got, I would hop on the treadmill, and if I could go two miles an hour, three miles an hour. I started Olympic weightlifting and working fiercely with the ambition in my heart that I was gonna come back better than ever. It turned into, well, hold on, now it's getting fun. I never thought I would have a daughter who was an Olympic weightlifter, but Laura's always had a quiet determination that whatever happens, it doesn't matter, just persevere forward and give it your all. When I was in eighth grade, a student collapsed with sudden cardiac arrest, and I wanted to make sure that when it happened again, we as a school would be prepared. So I met with my local representative, who was kind enough to help me draft a bill that I testified for at the State House. I was just thrilled that someone could be 15 years old and be that passionate about anything legislative. And I can't recall ever having someone get such a loud round of applause after she testified. Being able to affect a change is inspiring and empowering. You have to know that the pain that you took in practice and the times you did things that you didn't want to do is going to pay off. And by doing that, realizing that nothing is impossible. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Mountain Star Cache Valley Hospital, together we're greater. New Smile Dental, experience dental care. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. KSM means music. Music is all we do. Four Seasons Apartments and Townhomes is your home. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 25 years. Back here at Ridgeline High School in Millville, Eric Olson along with you after a scoreless first half, Mountain Crest and Ridgeline. Ridgeline got the ball inside the Mountain Crest five yard line and could not get a first down and could not get a touchdown. And that was the best scoring opportunity for either team there in that first half. Mountain Crest was 77 total yards, 72 on the ground, five through the air. Schroeder, seven carries, 36 yards. And for Ridgeline, they had 86 yards, 50 on the ground, and 36 through the air. One turnover in the game. That was an interception thrown by Cox. And that's where we are. 37 yards for DeMooney on 12 carries. Mountain Crest will get the ball to start the second half. A couple of scores of note. Skyview leading Bear River, 14-0. Skyview's already claimed at least a share of the region title for the third straight year, and their 10th overall. Logan and Green Canyon are tied at 14. Both of those scores were second quarter scores. Temperature in the 30s and a full moon overhead as Richline kicks off to start this second half. Fielded at the one yard line. And up across the 25 to the 26 goes Noah Fletcher, the junior with the nice return. The Mountain Crest will get started there.
We've seen some drops tonight as far as passes go. You know, everybody thinks of wet weather like rain is making a slick football, but cold weather, in my opinion, is worse. That ball just gets slicker and slicker. The wet weather, if it's not cold, cold, the ball isn't quite as slick as when it's dry and cold. Didn't see a lot of Schroeder in the first half. He picks up four yards there. Mountain Crest came out doing a whole lot of other stuff. They still were running the ball, but there are a lot of end around stuff, quick hitters to a full back, and then they threw eight passes in the first half. They average about 16 passes a game. They're gonna turn around and hand to Schroeder again. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Dolly comes out of the pile. He's fired up. Third and six. Ridgeline is 0 for four on third downs. Excuse me, Mountain Crest is 0 for four on third downs. Burbank unloads it quickly. His receiver sat down there right about the sticks. And Arnell reaches out and gains the first down line. Arnell with reception. First third down conversion of the game for the Mustangs. See what they do on that all important first possession of the second half. It sets the tone. Schroeder takes the handoff, gains a yard. He averages six yards per carry on the season. He's got 10 carries for 47 yards tonight. He also averages 23 carries a game, so he's a little bit behind that pace. And he's behind Burbank now on second and nine. Burbank turns and hands it to Schroeder. Schroeder up to the 40 yard line, a gain of two. Third and seven. Dally and Mellon. Called Aiden Mellon's name a few times. Mountain Crest converted a third down just a moment ago. A third and seven a moment ago. Let's see if they can do it again. Same play, same result. In fact, better yardage as a tackle was missed. That was complete to Caleb Swenson. 15 yards and a first down. Mountain Grist in Ridgeline territory, a methodical opening drive. Deal on the end around. It wasn't an end around, it was just a little inside give to Schroeder, no gain. They are dialed in, referring to Ridgeline, to Hunter Schroeder. They don't want to let him beat them. He's got 49 yards on 12 carries. His carries this half have been four yards, zero yards, one yards, two yards, and zero yards. Second and 10. Here's a little end around. Is this Jackson? He gets to the edge. The defensive end was tackled. Elijah Jackson, the back And it's coming back. So Elijah Jackson got around the corner. It was Cade Hansen. It was just tackled. You see two flags down there. Right behind the official holding on Mountain Crest. For Mountain Crest, four penalties in the first half. 35 yards worth, that's their first of the second half. Yeah. 
Arnell, 793 yards passing coming into this game, 65 of 135. 12 yards per completion, four touchdowns, three interceptions. Again, only three games with over 100 yards passing. They average 99 yards passing per game to the Mustangs. And it's second and 20. Burbank being chased by Hanson. Hit as he throws. This one's up for grabs. And a flag in the secondary. And Burbank is slow to get up. If it's pass interference, it's a 15-yard penalty, and it's not an automatic first down. It may be a hold or an illegal use of hands on Ridgeline. It's a hold on the Ridgeline defense. Ten yards and second down, so it'll be second and ten. Ridgeline with only their third penalty of the night. 25 yards worth. Now second and 11. So it was second and 21 before. Burbank was slow to get up. He really took a shot just as he threw it. Mountain Crest has held the ball for four minutes and six seconds of this second half. First possession of the second half. There's 7.54 to play in the third. No score at Ridgeline. Burbank gives it off to Schroeder. Schroeder stutter steps and then puts his shoulder down and he picks up five. Brings up a manageable third and six. Belly and Wibben on the stop. Two of six on third downs for Mountain Crest, and two of two here on this drive. Both times they threw a little quick hit pattern to the left side, and that's where Arnell is going to line up. They're going to give it to Schroeder. Big hole. Schroeder's across the 35 down to the 30 yard line, and a first down. 10 yards for Hunter Schroeder. And the big pigs up front. Rooting at the trough, getting them a big hole. First down, Mustangs. This methodical drive continues at the 30-yard line of Ridgeline. No score. Ridgeline hasn't touched the ball yet here in this second half. We've played over five minutes. Hutchinson, the fullback, Arnell in motion. Now he motions back out, and they give to Schroeder. Schroeder gets ahead of steam, and he's finally pushed backwards. But his forward momentum got him about three. Fifteen carries, 67 yards for Schroeder. Thirty-one yards here in this third quarter. He had thirty-six at the half. High formation. They're going to hand to Schroeder again. Schroeder hit at the line of scrimmage. Pushes forward for two. It's third and five. Mountain Crest three for three on third downs on this possession. Five and a half minutes to play in the third. Mountain Crest has taken the opening kickoff of this second half. This is the 11th play of the drive. Burbank to throw. Throws that little out pattern right at the sticks, and it's a first down. Swenson, Dylan Nelson Caleb Swenson. They've run the same pattern on three third downs. The same result. First downs every time. Those corners are playing off on those edges like that. Mountain Crest isn't a team that's going to 
chuck it downfield. And we're under five minutes to play in the third. Give to Schroeder on the little counter. He picks up five. May have been Veter. I think it was. I thought it was Schroeder though. Let's see. No, that was Veter. That time. As we approach four minutes to play in the third. They fake the game inside, give the end around to Hutchinson. He won't go down, but he's not going to get away. Dally caught him. He's pushed clear back to the 21, a loss of six. That's going to be third and 11. Hutchinson, the ball carry. This is the fifth third down opportunity for Mountain Crest on this opening drive of the second half. They've eaten almost nine minutes at the clock. Burbank with the double move on the edges and he's gonna just throw this one out of the back of the end zone. Eight minute and 34 second drive. And it's fourth and 11. Will Mountain Crest try a field goal from here to be about 37 yards? Or will they go for it knowing what their defense can do? Well, they got a field goal team out there, but Arnell is the kicker, and he's not out there. Burbank, the quarterback's the holder. Thirty-eight yards. Got enough leg. No, he does not, and it's wide to the right. So an eight minute and thirty-nine second drive for Mountain Crest comes up short. Thirteen plays for the Mustangs. And we're still scoreless. Athletic trainer Nate Burnett are proud to be the official medical providers for Riverhawk Athletics. Remember, Ridgeline had the ball inside the Mountain Crest five and went for it on fourth down and two and couldn't pick up the first down. A field goal might be enough to win this game. The way these two defenses are playing, here's the give to Bot. He runs into the line, puts his head down, and picks up two. Four carries for one yard for Bott. Six carries, 14 yards for Cox. 12 carries, 37 yards for DeMooney. Two sacks for that Mountain Crest defense, contributing to the lack of yardage for Cox. He's been dropped twice for minus eight yards. Gonna give it to Bott again. Bott finds a hole into the secondary and out near the 40 yard line. Gain of 13. DeMooney in the game now. Bought to the sideline, his best run of the night. Two and a half to play in the third quarter. We're going to give it to DeMooney. DeMooney stutter steps. He's back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Jackson and Guthrie for the Mustangs.
Ridge line taking a long time. Ball's finally snapped. Cox throws a swing to DeMooney. Trying to get him in space, and Jackson's there. Jackson grabs him for a four-yard loss. It's going to be third and long. Third and 14. Coming up for a Ridgeline team that's three of nine on third downs. We're approaching one minute to play in the third quarter. Pressure coming up the middle. Cox flushed out, unloads, pass. Is it caught or not? Incomplete. So it's fourth down. And we're under a minute to play. So the Mustangs go. One, two, three, four, five plays. Push it out to the 31 yard line. And have to punt it away. High snap, Murdoch climbs the ladder. Another short knuckleball. This one doesn't take a great bounce for Ridgeline. And it finally rolls dead at about the 38. That's where Mountain Crest takes over. Still no score with 45 seconds to play in the third quarter. We want to thank our Riverhawk boosters, Cash Car Wash, Cook and Solder, Put an Ankle, Giant Carpet One, and Icon Health and Fitness. High formation, Hutchinson, the fullback. They're going to give to Schroeder. Schroeder burrows forward for three. Schroeder, the ball carrier. 17 carries, 72 yards now for Schroeder. Will Larson on the play for the Riverhawk. 36 yards here in this third quarter. He had 36 in the first half. He averages 35 per quarter. <laughs> this will probably be the last play of the third quarter. And it's a give to Schroeder. Schroeder picks up three more. And that's the end of the third quarter. We go to the fourth, Mountain Crest for the third and three when we come back. When I finally got tired of playing through knee pain, I went to a surgeon I'd heard good things about. Best choice I ever made. My doctor was great, but so was the hospital. They presented me with all of my options, and they took time to help me make decisions. That's the way it should be. That's what led to this moment, and <laughs> that look on Phil's face. Before your moment of truth, choose a health plan that partners with the Mountain Star Healthcare Network. Not bigger, just better. Hey guys, if you've been thinking about a guitar or any other instrument in mind for you or somebody else, we have some great financing options from 6 to 12 months. Yamaha's doing a 12 month plan right now. Come in, get some time to pay it off and have no interest for up to a year. Well, Mountain Crest starts the second half with a 13-play, nine-minute drive. And then they miss the field goal that would have given them a 3-0 lead. Rich Line gets the ball back. They run five plays and then have to punt. And now Mountain Crest has a third down and three. 
four of 10 on third down for the Mustangs. Schroeder 72 yards on 18 carries. Mountain Crest with a hard count. 10 carries in the third quarter for Schroeder. Here's the give, Schroeder tripped up and he's short of the first down. He gets a yard, that's it. And that's one thing I've seen Ridgeline doing. They're trying to get down into Hunter Schroeder's feet and not mess with him up high, he's so strong. And they're getting down in his ankles. They can't really get anything going and Schroeder 140 yards per game on average, and he picks those up, you know, six, six to ten yards at a time. He's not a kid that he's not a kid that runs multiple 50-yard runs per game. Mountain looks like they're going to punt, and Burbank does kick it away. Murdoch with the fair catch at the 22. So the rich line will. Give it another shot. No score, 11.06 to play. It's halftime in Smithfield. And Skyview leads Bear River 28-0. Skyview is going to win the region outright for the third straight year. Their 10th overall region title. Mountain Crest with a win would Take second place in the region. Doesn't mean anything for playoff seedings. They hand it to Bach. Bach picks up four. Bach the ball carrier used up by Jackson. Mountain Chris takes on Bountiful on Wednesday night. Richline travels to Viewmont. Skyview has Providence Hall. That's the game that we have scheduled. The only game going on in the Valley that night. Cox had to wait for his receiver to turn, make his cut, and he finally does, and he hits him for a first down. It's Murdoch. First completion in the second half for Cox. And it's good for a first down. Ball out to the 34 yard line. Fake it to bot. Now they're going to run a little flanker screen over to the far side. That's Simmons. Pick up of three or four. Simmons takes it out of bounds by Fletcher. Simmons third catch, 24 yards. Now they run the same play the other way. Good blocking out in front. And Webb picks up the first down. Sixteen yards for Webb. His first grab of the game. Ridgeline now in Mountain Crest territory. I would imagine if Ridgeline gets the ball deep in Mountain Crest territory again, they'd probably kick a field goal. <laughs> Try to kick a field goal. There's nine minutes to play in a scoreless game. Cox pulls it down and now he falls down. He's thinking about it. He's looking downfield. He's not liking what he's seeing. He's being hesitant. We didn't see that with him early in the season when we saw him. He was letting it fly. 
And that's a big loss. 11 yards. And the third sack of the game for Mountain Crest. Cox just a sophomore, he's not even 16 yet. Cox over the middle to Dally, and it's incomplete. And it's third and 21. With eight minutes and two seconds to play in the game. Bridge line on the 43 yard line. They had the ball inside the five late in the first half. Couldn't punch it in. Decided not to try a field goal. Turned it over on downs. Mountcrest missed a field goal earlier in this second half. Mountcrest looks like they're bringing pressure. Let's see. Now they're rushing four. Cox is going to unload over the middle. He's got Murdoch. And a flag after. Murdoch stood up. Spun the ball and the official came over and threw the flag. It's a 22 yard gain. That'd be unsportsmanlike after the play. The play should stand. Let's see if that's what he threw it on. Murdoch stood up, spun the ball because he was excited about the completion and that's not a call we like at all. I don't care which side's doing it. It's a huge play in the game. Let the kid, I mean, he's not. He's not taunting anybody. But that's where we are these days because nobody can stand for anybody to be successful. The other team will get mad and we have to have problems because of that. Now let's just play football. Here we go, ball at the midfield with the Riverhawks get a first down. DeMooney up the middle. Three yards for DeMooney. DeMooney only his second carry of the second half. 14 carries, 40 yards. For Mountain Crest just so tough defensively. A 22 yard pass play. That's the biggest play of the night for Ridgeline. The Mustangs just don't give up many big plays. Second and seven. Under seven minutes to play. Give to Bott. Bott hit at the line of scrimmage and spun down. Wyatt Larson. Bott the ball carrier stopped by Larson. Bott picks up a yard, third and seven. Four for 11 on third downs for Ridgeline. Cox over the middle. Knocked down by Baldwin. Baldwin undercut the pattern by Dally. Baldwin was just running along on his hip and then he undercut the pattern. Should have picked it off, and he knows it, but it was a great job by Baldwin. And Ridgeline will have to punt. Penalty was big. The ball would have been at the 35. Now, if they had only gained three or four yards, still wouldn't have been in field goal position. So maybe it doesn't hurt as bad as you think, but you just never like to see penalties as a coach like that. Murdoch, Arnell, first down Mountain Crest at the 10 yard line. 6.06 to play in the ball game. No score at Ridge Line. Last score we got out of Logan and Green Canyon was a mild surprise. It was tied at 14 in the second quarter. Back to tied at 14 at halftime. That's the last score we got out of, out of that game. 
two backs in the backfield. And they hand it to Schroeder. And he picks up four. Under six minutes to play. As we tick toward our first overtime of the season. Not yet though, still five and a half to play. Mountain Crest with second down and seven. They're gonna hand it to Jackson. Here we go! Richline finally makes the stop, but all the way down at the 10 yard line. Show me the ball for you. There's a flag on the play. There is a flag back near midfield. And it looks like it's coming back. Tell whether it was Jackson or Veter on the run. It, it wasn't Schroeder. So it's a hold, and it's from the spot of the foul. But it's still a first down, and a ball out to the 36 yard line. But instead of first and goal, it's first down at your own 36. One of the receivers downfield was holding. 5.09 to play in the game. The rich line looked like maybe they were offsides. Let's see what the call is. And thanks to our silver boosters for the support they provide with Boyd High School. Visionary well, they call it on Mountain Crest. Members of the Center Union, Josh Bellaster, TJ Alton Cooley, Banker Dito, and a bird. I haven't called Rhett Gibbert's name a lot tonight. Top tackler on this team. Number three in 4A in tackles, number two in sacks. And they run his direction this time, and there's nothing there. There he is, right on cue, as he brings down Hunter Schroeder for a loss of two. Gebert. Quite a presence on that right defensive end. Doesn't have a sack tonight. You don't get many of those against Mountain Crest because you don't get many opportunities. And the clock ticks down towards four minutes to play. Second down and about 17. Burbank under pressure. He just gets rid of it. He just turned around and chucked it out of bounds. Third and long. in here and they throw it out to Schroeder. He's got some room but not too much as he's finally hauled down by Dally. Dally had some help from Noah Monk. Schroeder picked up about four and that's it. He had some room but Dally got there in a hurry. Ridgeline 
We'll get at least one more shot with 3.20 to play in the ball game. They come after that punt. Burbank gets away a high one. And it's caught at the 35 by Murdoch. And a lot of celebrating going on with the defensive coaches and their defenders as they come off the field. They've kept Schroeder under wraps tonight. 21 carries, 78 yards. The running back that's averaging 140 per game. And as we've mentioned multiple times, the number one rusher in 4A. See if the Ridgeline offense can get something going here. Give to DeMooney. Veter doing a great job of stretching that out. Boy, he held the edge. And he stretched that thing all the way to the sideline. And then Baldwin came up and forced DeMooney out of bounds after a two-yard loss. Talk about Jackson and Schroeder so much. Veter. Does that sort of thing all the time that we just saw right there. Give inside to Bach. No gain. These teams may want to just get to overtime and have opportunities on a short field. Because <laughs> we're down to almost two minutes to play in the game. Ridgeline's in no hurry. Cox against a three-man rush. Throws it to DeMooney, and DeMooney's cut down after a gain of about six. Arnell with a good tackle. And Ridgeline will punt. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know that you ever want to go to overtime, but Either one of these teams have moved the ball. You both get chances, I think, from the 25 in overtime. Murdoch calls for it, holds, holds, kicks it away, gives his coverage team time to get down there. Another good kick. It's going to die inside the 10. Fifty yard kick, less than a minute to play in regulation. I'd be shocked if we don't end up going into overtime. You can see that Mountain Crest can rip off a Big run in a hurry. They did it earlier on the last possession, but it was called back on a penalty. Well, they would have been in field goal range at the very least. They were down at the 10 yard line. It looks like Mountain Crest may kneel on it. And try to go into overtime. No, nope, they were gonna hand it off. Timeout Mountain Crest. Well, it felt like this was going to be a low-scoring game, but I didn't think it was going to be this low-scoring. Again, it's one of those where you can really second-guess Ridgeline why they didn't try to kick a field goal at the end of the first half when they had the ball down here so deep, but three points doesn't win many games. Green Canyon's taking the lead over Logan, 21-14. It's still 28-0 Skyview over Bear River. Ridgelines played their guts out tonight. And Mountain Crest defensively 
has been as nasty and impenetrable as they always are. Two full backs, and Schroeder is the tailback. We're gonna hand it to Schroeder. Schroeder's out to the 14 yard line. Schroeder the ball carrier, brought down by Adele. He averages 23 carries a game. His next carry will be 23. And it's a timeout called by Mountain Crest. Richlines dealt with injuries all season long to key players. A lot of games missed by key players. And they're starting to get guys healthy. And there's a feeling that they may be able to sneak up on some people in the playoffs. Fifty-two ticks on the clock. Second down and four. again in that two fullback formation. Looking for a hole, there's not one there. He's stacked up at the line of scrimmage. And one of the Mustangs gets up Gimpy. It's Jackson Lee, the senior offensive lineman. Another timeout taken. I believe Lee's the center. Yeah, they've got another center over there warming up with Burbank. Now he's down. He got up and he was limping. He was on the back side of that play and he was limping pretty bad. One of the Ridgeline players helped him up, kind of walking him back toward the huddle and he went down. He's back up and limping off the field. He limping pretty bad. 44 seconds to play in the ball game, in regulation. No score, Ridgeline and Mountain Crest. One timeout left for Mountain Crest. Ridgeline, I would imagine if they can hold here, they'll take their second timeout. Mountain Crest be forced to punt. Huge play. Two fullbacks again. Burbank's gonna throw. Unloads it, he's got Fuller and he leaves it short. And there's a flag! <laughs> I don't think any contact was ever made. That's a 15 yard penalty. But what it does is it gives, I don't think any contact was ever made. The Ridgeline defender did not turn around. But it looked like there was a few inches of space between the both of them. And just maybe a few hands, but that back judge is way closer to the play than I am. But I've got a good angle. He's right in front of me, I'm just on top of the booth. Where that hurts Ridgeline is that would have been fourth down with the clock stopped and Mountain Crest punting deep in their own end zone. Now, Mountain Crest has a timeout and they're gonna chuck it up again. Burbank going downfield, knocked away, this time no flag. That's a good looking throw by Burbank. He's bitten. Was the intended receiver and the defensive back was step for step with him. And there was contact on that play too. 
but this time the flag stayed in the pocket. 30 seconds to play in regulation. In a scoreless ball game, ball at the 30 yard line. Mountain taking some shots, now they're gonna hand it to Schroeder. Schroeder. Picks up seven and Mount Crest will take their last time out. Will Larson almost out with Mellon. So you saw what Mount Crest was doing once. They took that deep shot on fourth down and why not? Because if you get a pass interference call like they did, you get 15 yards and now you can maybe take a couple of more shots. And if you get a, if you don't get the catch, you may get another friendly flag. Obviously, the worst thing that could happen is the turnover. But now you're hucking it so far downfield, it's like a punt. If you do turn it over that deep, 23 seconds left in regulation. Full moon and 34 degrees in Millville. Early October football at its finest, yeah? Third down. And Mountain Crest leaves early. So instead of third and three, it's going to be third and eight. Five of 12 on third downs for the Mustangs. Nobody in the backfield with Burbank. Five wide receivers and Burbank's gonna run it. He's gonna be just past the marker and it's a first down. The clock will stop as they move the chains. Burbank nine yards. And now they kill it with 12 seconds left. Again, Mountain Crest needs, well, they need 10, 20, 30, probably about 35 yards. Well, maybe more like 40 yards to have a, a realistic chance at a field goal. Now they're gonna, Mountain Crest coaching staff, they killed it and then they're letting their team come to the sideline for a quick huddle and now they're charging Mountain Crest with their last timeout. So they didn't take a timeout when Jackson Lee was hurt. Because now they're at their last timeout. They had one more timeout than what I thought they had. And now they take it. with 12 seconds left. So even if they do get a long completion, the clock will stop on a first down while they move the chains. The team would have to sprint down and clock it. Spike the ball. It's, it's unlikely, but not impossible. They're gonna give it to Schroeder. Schroeder's got blockers. Schroeder's gonna be short of the first down, and that's gonna be the end of regulation. Schroeder picks up seven, and we're gonna to go to overtime here in Millville. We're scoreless after four quarters of play, Mountain Crest and Ridgeline going to overtime. tell me something and I'd say, huh? And then they'd tell me again and I'd say, huh? And they'd say, never mind. And so I called and made an appointment. Say the word, pass. He's a PhD and I know what it takes to get a PhD. Say the word, red. It was like night and day. And then the hearing test was the, the thing that I thought, wow, he, he really knows what he's doing. 
I would recommend the Dr. Dange to anybody, everybody. Vehicle won't start? We can fix that. Not running right? We can fix that. Won't stop? We can fix that. Auto Evolution. Honest service at a fair price on Airport Road. We're going to go into overtime, scoreless at Ridgeline. Eric Olson along with you. So the region play is going to last a few more minutes at least for these two teams. So they'll put the ball down. at the 25 yard line and each team will get a crack at it. Green Canyon leading Logan 21-20 midway through the fourth quarter. And Mountain Crest still thumping Bear River last score we had out of that one. Out of I think that one's over at Bear River. So Ridgeline gets it first. They can pick up a first down if they score a field goal. If they kick a field goal, Mountain Crest would have to score a touchdown to win. Mountain Crest gets a field goal, and we start it all over again. DeMooney with the carry. Overtime yardage doesn't usually... A little in high school if that counts but at the end of regulation 142 rushing yards for Mountain Crest 49 passing for 191 yards 71 yards rushing 85 passing for Ridgeline 156 yards to Mooney didn't pick up any yards here's Murdoch down to the 19 Murdoch with reception stopped by Bader Murdoch's fifth catch for 49 yards. Third and four. One first down in the second half for Ridgeline. The ball at the 20 yard line. You don't want to take a sack. Cox unloads, nearly picked off. Arnell with a nice close on it and he leaps in and knocks it down. Webb, the intended receiver. If it goes complete, then Webb's got the first down and maybe a touchdown, but Arnell stretched out and knocked it down. Murdoch will attempt a field goal from 37 from the right hash. Webb's the holder. Good placement, long enough, it's good! So the 37 yard field goal is good. And it took extra time, but one of the teams finally got on the board. 
Now it's Mountain Crest's turn. In a three to nothing ball game. Mountain Crest, a touchdown wins it. A field goal takes us into a second overtime. And they're on their feet in Millville. 30 to 32 degree night. Give to Schroeder. Boy, Schroeder just rumbles for eight. He's got 106 yards on 26 carries. Mountain Crest really kind of needs this win to stay in that top 10 in RPI. Nobody's really sure how that's going to shake out in its first year. You don't want to risk it. Give it again to Schroeder. Schroeder grabbed by Hansen and dragged down after a gain of a yard, third and a yard. Hansen's had a good night on senior night. Called his name a few times. Third and a long one. Jackson and Hutchinson are the full backs. Schroeder the tailback. Hand it to Schroeder. Schroeder in space! Schroeder for the win! Touchdown! We're done! Mountain Crest! In overtime, Steve's off the upset bid from a shattered Ridgeline team. A 17 yard touchdown run by Schroeder, 124 yards on the night. And Mountain Crest wins it 6-3 in overtime. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time on the Game of the Week. The Game of the Week on the Valley Channel is brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cache Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Mountain Star Cache Valley Hospital, together we're greater. New Smile Dental, experience dental care. Cache Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you have been missing. Palmer Home Furnishings, our low overhead means higher quality at lower prices. Aspen Dental, get that gorgeous smile you've always wanted. KSM means music, music is all we do. Four Seasons Apartments and Townhomes is your home. Anderson Seed and Garden, growing better gardeners. Factory Pizzeria, we're open late after the game. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff, all kinds of stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's TV station for over 25 years.